in this video we'll talk about the interest rate effect and how monetary policy can affect the aggregate demand curve. To understand how monetary policy influences aggregate demand, we must first motivate which component of aggregate demand matters more for our study of business cycles. In a previous video, we outlined three effects that give the aggregate demand its downward slope. Out of the three, the interest rate effect is the most relevant. A majority of the changes in output that we observe during business cycles come from changes in investment. The wealth effect is less important because money holdings are only a small part of household wealth who mostly has wealth in real estate, and consumption is the most stable part of GDP. Also, the exchange rate effect is relatively small because imports and exports are a relatively small percentage of GDP. To unpack the interest rate effect and how monetary policy influences investment, we will use the theory of liquidity preference. We will represent this theory with a demand and supply diagram. Money demand reflects how much wealth people want to hold in liquid form as compared to other forms of assets. The money supply is of course determined by the Fed. The interest rate will adjust to balance out the forces of supply and demand. A note on the interest rate. In here, we will be assuming that inflation is constant in the very short term. So changes in nominal interest rates will change the real interest rate one to one. For that reason, we will not be distinguishing between the real and nominal interest rate here. We will just refer to as the interest rate. Because money supply is fixed by the Fed, let's focus on understanding the demand for money. The key determinants of money demand are income, the interest rate, and the aggregate price level. Let me explain how real income influences the demand for money. Now, suppose that real income rises, holding prices and interest rate constant. The in increase in real income means that households will likely want to increase the demand for goods and services. In order to purchase more goods and services, households will need more money. In other words, more liquidity. They will sell some of their interest-bearing assets and convert them into money, this more liquid assets. For that reason, an increase in real income increases money demand, other things held constant. Now, to illustrate how income and money demand um, work together, I created a narrative or a story. I would like you to construct a similar narrative for the effects of the interest rate and the price level of money demand. So in this active learning exercise, please go to Top Hat and do exercises A and B. Thank you for your responses on Top Hat. Now let's think about uh, the interest rate. Now suppose that the interest rate increases, again holding income and the price level unchanged. Now what happens to money demand? The interest rate is the opportunity cost of holding money. It's what you have to give up um, to have your money in its most liquid form, which of course does not pay an interest rate. An increase in the interest rate therefore reduces money demand because households will attempt to buy interest-bearing assets to take advantage of the higher interest rate. For that reason, an increase in interest rates will cause a decrease in money demand, other things being equal. Now, let's suppose that the price level rises, but income and the interest rates are unchanged. What happens to money demand in this case? Well, if income, real income, that's, that, uh, that is, is unchanged, people will want to buy the same amount of goods and services. But because prices are higher, they will need more money to do so. For that reason, an increase in prices causes an increase in the demand for money, other things being equal. Now that we understand the determinants of money demand, let's use the framework we've developed to expand our understanding of the interest rate effect. So let's start with a fall in the price level. A fall in the price level reduces money demand and shifts it to the left. The new equilibrium interest rate is lower 
than before and reduces the cost of borrowing, which stimulates investment. Increasing investment means that demand for goods and services will increase, raising real output. This relationship between prices and real output is a major motivator for the downward slope of the aggregate demand curve. Now let's talk about Fed policy. The Fed uses monetary policy to shift the aggregate demand curve. By targeting the federal funds rate and moving money supply accordingly, they can influence interest rates and investments across the country. From the perspective of the model, if the Fed wanted to shift aggregate demand to the left, they would increase their target for the Fed funds rate. This would entail lowering the money supply. Raising interest rates would increase the cost of borrowing and reduce investment. Of course, because prices have not changed, the reduction in investment would be a shift to the left in the aggregate demand curve. Shifting aggregate demand to the right, of course, would involve moving the Fed funds rate target and money supply in the opposite directions than illustrated here. Okay, so let's practice your newly found skills. In this active learning exercise, I would like you to determine the short run effect on output of each of the events below. Then I would like you to determine how the Fed should adjust the money supply and interest rates to stabilize output. We will review the answers to this exercise on class.